Yeah, I said what I said. I'd rather be famous. Oh, hold on, I'll call you right back. Uh, hey, you guys are here. Um, you're a little bit early. We're, we're not quite ready. Uh, the show's not completely ready for you to see. So uh, let me just say hi. Just relax a little bit. We'll be coming back and starting. Take a look in a moment. We cram a lot into 30 minutes where we talk about movies. We talk about streaming TV series. We talk about stuff on small screens and big screens and everything in between. And I know you're sick of me already. I can <laughs> feel it. That's why I want to come over here and talk about what I'm excited about. Steph Sanders! Oh, my How are you, man? I had the weirdest dream that there was a global pandemic and then it, everything went away and I didn't get to see you. And then all of a sudden, that's exactly what's saying. This is Same the dream. first time I've seen you <laughs> since the pandemic and it's good to see you. Fantastic. When we last left off, we were really talking about movies. That's right. Where were we? What did we talk about? Popcorn and The Gentleman. That's right. Right yeah. before the pandemic, we talked about Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. That's now the number one series on Netflix. Did you know? I love that? it too. I watch it. See, that's that's what good a pandemic will do for you. <laughs> All right. So we got to talk about today. What are you excited about? You know, I like big movies. Yes. Got to talk about Godzilla. Yes. V Kong. Times yes. Kong. The Cast is, of the Titans. Is it versus Kong? Or <laughs> Times Kong? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that's why we're bringing on an expert. My friend Tara Hitchcock's going to join us in a moment. And so uh, you just sit back. In a moment, we will start this show talking about King Kong and so much more. Next, we'll take a look. Take a look, where we'll take a look at Godzilla times Kong. Is it Godzilla versus Kong? Is it, well, we don't really know. Either way, it's the new empire. Who knew they could be allies? Evidently they are. And what's up with this baby Kong? Or is it like Grogu, we call him something else? We'll ask the experts about that. Also, take a look at Kung Fu Panda 4. Four weeks after its release, it's still packing theaters. Aquafina's our very special guest. Also, take a look at Rebel Moon. With part two headed to Netflix, I'll tell you why I love the original and why you should too. While trolls repeatedly punch me in the face. That and more as we take a look. Hey, welcome back. It is Take a Look. My name is Mark S. Allen. To my immediate right is the world famous Steph Sanders comedian. How are you? I'm great. Fantastic. Good to see you. It's good to see you. Good to be seen. Uh, this is the perfect show for you to be a part of because I know you like big movies. You yes. like big blockbusters. The very first movie I ever saw in a movie theater was King Kong versus the Smog Monster. Or was it oh, Godzilla wow. versus the Smog Monster? I don't know. I was six years old. My mom <laughs> shouldn't have been taking me to that anyway. It says a lot about me. Uh, in the meantime, are you excited about this one? Very excited. Clash of the Titans, protector of humanity. Yes. Versus protector of nature. Yes. I love it. All I right. I think it's a great story. All right. So here to talk about that and also to elaborate as to whether or not it's King Kong versus Godzilla as opposed to King Kong times Godzilla is the world famous film critic, one of the uh, original members of the Broadcast Film Critics Association we now call the Critics Choice. It's Tara Hitchcock. Hey, hey Tara. <laughs> Hey, first of all, I wouldn't say worldwide. I am huge in Queen <laughs> Creek, Arizona, but I don't know if I'd go worldwide. Um, I'm going to throw you guys a curveball. Guess what? 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 These two titans team up, but the X is silent, according to Warner Brothers. So it's Godzilla Kong, the yeah, new empire. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Tara, if we I'm say one you. or the other, is there a fine? What is Warner Brothers saying? <laughs> Um, not much. I just got that text oh, because okay. I messed it up earlier in the week. So, yeah, it's, it's Godzilla Kong. The X apparently is silent. And, Mark, you were six years old when you saw the uh, your first Godzilla, Godzilla Kong Godzilla versus film. the Smog Monster. But we've had 70 years of these films, and this is just the latest in the MonsterVerse. Have you seen it yet? It is big. So, Steph, you'll be thrilled. It is huge. It. Yes. Yeah, I've seen it. I just don't know you how to say I screen. saw it because I don't have the title right. You sat down with the cast. Tell us what we should expect. Well, you should expect a lot. I will say, to me, the star of the show is the soundtrack, but we talked to the cast about what makes a great epic battle in a film like this. Take Can't a look. Wait. Take a look. The fights in this are incredible. I mean, and clearly there's some CGI, but at the end of the day, things like, oh, the old sand in the eyes trick, that'll, that'll do it. In your opinion, what makes a great fight between Titans? 
if you're watching this on a big screen? When they team up. Like, watching them team up is really, really cool. Like, I'm not giving anything away because it's in the trailer. But when you see Godzilla running, you see that there's cardio with Godzilla and Kong. Like, and they're just, yeah. like, yeah. running yeah. with... I'm like, what is going... It's, like, it's yeah. insane. Like, yeah. I remember watching that and I was like, I can't believe, A, that Godzilla's arms work. And, B, that, like, <laughs> that they are running side by side. Like, it's, like, that Doesn't arm... He, that, he, like, ride mm -hmm. Kong? Yeah, like, he jumps on point. Godzilla and... Oh, my God. It's like, a yeah. story, though, isn't it, that makes a good fight? It's story. It's because the fact that you can see their expressions yeah. and understand what's going on. And yeah. that they've chosen to just, team up. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. a whole, like, narrative happening. That's why it's Godzilla and Kong. You X. know what I mean? Yep. Why didn't I pick up on that? They didn't say it. They kept it silent. All right, so back to the baby Kong. You have unique perspective on that. How? Well, it's interesting because I think the director, as you'll hear in a second, inspired, or not, not so much inspired, but recognizing the timing of a baby Kong when the whole baby Yoda craze came in. Uh, he's a big martial arts guy. Fans, I think, are going to love baby Kong. Looks can be very deceiving. He's adorable at first, but as you'll see in the movie, uh, not so much. But I chatted with director Adam Wingard about that. Take a look. Speaking of new things introduced, we get basically a, a baby Kong in a way. Looks can be deceiving. He's adorable at first and you learn very quickly, not so much. What went into creating baby, or well, I don't even know what to call him baby Kong. Well, yeah, in the movie, his name is Suko, but yeah, like they refer to him as baby Kong. And um, it's funny, it's like whenever we were developing this film, it wasn't too long after the, the whole baby Yoda craze had started. And um, and so I obviously didn't want to follow follow that, but the the shorthand that I always gave people when we were developing the movie is that you know you know Baby Kong is sort of like if you took Baby Yoda, but he would bite the skin off of your face. Um, right. <laughs> um, he's a he's a tough little guy, and he's he's uh, he's got some tricks up his sleeve. So he's he's a complicated little little fellow. He's not just straightforward and cute, even though he is adorable. <laughs> Indorable, indeed. Adorable, yeah. Yeah. So, and he grows on you. He grows so, on you throughout the movie. So, Tara, quick question. I don't want to be presumptuous, but who do you prefer, Kong or Godzilla? All day long, King Kong. I just got think it. he's got a soft side to him that you'll see in this film. He's just much more cuddly <laughs> than somebody like Godzilla with all the spikes. Also, I live in Arizona in the desert, so I'm used to seeing, you know, lizards and things that have a, a lot of spikes. I prefer a, a nice uh, King Kong. Um, go into this without a lot of expectations. I really think the soundtrack is one of the stars. There's some great 80s needle drops in here. Um, Brian Tyree, Henry, Dan Stevens provide uh, some much needed comic relief. And of course, Rebecca Hall is always good. And Kaylee Hoddle, the young deaf actress who plays Gia, she's wonderful. Her yeah. First film ever was the first one a few years ago, and so she's she doesn't have a lot under her belt, but she really you would never know. She does a really great job. Hey, mind if I jump in? I want to pile on with my expertise because uh, I too sat down with people to talk about things and stuff. Jack Black specifically. <laughs> you mind? You mind if we show something? All right. Be my guest. Yeah, kind of like back in the day, I talked to Jack Black about Kong. Take a look. Uh, your guy sort of has a uh, love for King Kong because he knows he's going to be able to exploit him and make lots and lots of money. Yeah. If Tenacious D did a love song, an ode to King Kong, how would that go? I'm not going to just lay out some stinky crap for you now. All right, here goes. Kong is the one. He's a secret magic lover. That's all you get. <laughs> that was brilliant. I know. You got it for free. You brought with the brilliant. All right. If I see you on TV singing that song like you wrote it, I'm gonna get my Guidos on you. I got, look, I got Jack Glass here. What, what are you laughing at? Oh my God. What? Your hair. The hair. You, you know, like Party City Owen Wilson wig. Come on, man. <laughs> you, you can't be serious. I know NSYNC is getting back together. I feel yeah, like okay. you should be part of that group. I, Steph, how long have you known Mark for? I've known him for over two decades. How long have you known Mark? Almost, about 10, about one decade. Okay, so I, I have been privy to the blonde tips and the different styles, and I, I'm not really one to talk about the hair, <laughs> um, but I have to love that. That's all I could focus on, that entire Jack Black interview, Mark. Oh, my all God. Right. Yeah, did, one of the producers said Justin I look Bieber like Justin would be proud. And one of the producers <laughs> said I look like a Ken doll if it had been microwaved. Hey, thanks, Darla. I appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Hey, Tara Hitchcock, where can we find you? 
Um, Harkins Theaters, and they, we've got four in California. We're the largest independently owned theater chain in the U.S. based here in Arizona, but in four states and four in California. Or just go to Tara on TV, my Instagram, Facebook, although I'm not really active on that. So I guess just Instagram. Awesome. Or if you're you. in the Phoenix, Arizona area. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for hanging out with us. All I right, Tara Hitchcock. All right, continuing on with Steph, uh, Steph Sanders, we're going to take a look at some other movies. Specifically, Aquafina is yes. crushing it. Kung Fu Panda in its fourth week of release is still killing it at the theaters. We'll talk about that and her next. Also coming up, Rebel Moon. I almost forgot about it because pretty much anyone who saw it has forgotten about it, <laughs> except for the haters. We'll talk about that and more as we take a look next. Hey, welcome back to uh, Take a Look. It's where we take a look at movies. You're swiveling around like Dr. Evil. <laughs> That's awesome. Big kid. By the way, if I was remaking Austin Powers, you would be Dr. Evil. I would this, love This you. would be awesome. <laughs> uh, hey, it's comedian Steph Sanders. My name is Mark S. Allen. We're talking about movies killing it at the box office or movies you can watch streaming or series you can watch streaming. But specifically, let's go back to big. Kung Fu Panda, week four of release, still doing well at the box office, crushing wow. it. Yeah. Who knew we need a sequel to Kung Fu Panda I, I, 10 I, years I later? Give me Kung Fu Panda 6, 7. If you can do Fast and Furious 27, why not Kung Fu Panda 4? I love Aquafina. I mm -hmm. love Jack Black. Mm -hmm. I love everything about this movie. I got a chance to sit down with Aquafina to talk about it. Take a look. Do you ever think about how surreal your life is that, like, you're in the top floor of the grandest hotel? where you once had a character that played a valet Parker yeah. in, <laughs> yes. in the Marvel Universe downstairs. <laughs> that, that's right, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, that, is, that, that did hit me last night as we were pulling into the hotel. I was like, I've been here before. And then, yeah, so it's, it's, it's like I'm come back home. It's well, nice. uh, and then I'm not just saying this because we're toe to toe. I'm a big fan of your work. I have oh. been since the YouTube days. And oh, wow. everything you, you do is awesome. Thanks. And concluding this, yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of this movie as well, yeah. Who would have thought one of your most layered, most complicated characters <laughs> is a fox in yeah. an animated movie? <laughs> right, right, totally, yeah, who knew? She's a thief? Yes. But, but you know, wow, because she needs to, I mean, that that's, yeah, you that's understand right. her backstory, she's, right. she's got to steal. She's, yeah, she needs to, I don't think she needs to steal like quite the level that she is, that Paul Rich finds her stealing, but you're right, you're right, she, she does need that for survival, right? Well, like you, she's an overachiever. <laughs> exactly. In everything she does. <laughs> totally, thank you, yeah. All right, so you're sitting next to someone on a plane for a six hour flight, they want to know everything about this movie, how would you sum it up? Wow, that's a really good way of asking that question. Um, so you have six hours, is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Let's start from the beginning. What do we need to know? Um, I will say that, you know, I, I was a huge fan of this franchise growing up. I was a huge fan of Kung Fu Panda and Poe in it. And, uh, and, and so it was, it's very surreal to be a part of it, especially in this specific one. I think it's, it's, a, it's a big one in the franchise. And, and um, I, I think that there's, it, it, we have Viola Davis as a chameleon, very, very scary role, probably. Uh, you know, the scariest villain you could have. And I think, and you're gonna see like old characters come back. There's a lot of heart. There's that like very specific Kung Fu Panda comedy as, you know, set by our, our director, Mike Mitchell, who's sure. incredible. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, I'm, it just, I'm so happy to have been a part of it and I'm really excited to see it. It's been almost a decade since the last movie. People are jonesing for this. Do you know how excited the fan yeah. base is to see this? I hope so, yeah, I, I am too. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm guessing it's been around over a decade. Right. You were probably a fan as well going into it. I was a huge fan going into it, yeah. So I, and that that's always a little crazy. I, I, and I, I've had similar feelings on other projects where I was a big fan of them growing up. Um, right. But it's like when you're reading the material and you're interacting with the characters that you were fans of, I mean, it's, it's a different layer of, of something. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be uh, animated, and it's a panda bear. <laughs> There's so many things in here that, that are actually leaning into cultural correctness uh, and that they get right. Yeah, definitely. And I think that, you know, to a, to a certain degree, there, were never, there weren't movies like this when I was growing up, necessarily like, like Kung Fu Panda, sure. that involved these kind of very specific cultural elements. And I've always liked the world that they've existed in. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it makes it, it makes you feel proud to be Chinese. Yeah, that you should be. It yeah. is awesome. Um, well, let's see. You're back at the hotel where you were once a Marvel character. Yes. You're in this movie. You're a grand marshal. You pretty much, I would say, you've done it all. <laughs> but what do you want to do that you haven't done? Well, wow. Um, 
I don't know, just just kind of like just really just ride, just uh, get in a trolley like it's going super fast, like 60 miles an hour down the hill. Oh, wow. Look at the time. Remember, we have to do that thing down by the place with that guy. <laughs> Did you actually think you could drift a meal? Well, then come and get it. No, 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 no. Don't come and get it. Destroy them. <laughs> Lots of action and Aquafina as that fox. She does an amazing job. So I remember Laugh Factory. I think the year was probably 2017. Yep. I saw you at the Laugh Factory yep. on the same bill yep. with Aquafina. Yep. So I'm asking you, is she nice? She's everything. I know Aquafina. As a matter of fact, you know her name is Nora Loom. No, well, yes, really? Right. That's why I know Aquafina. Aquafina is what you see is what you get with her. She's uh, she gave me a lot of great advice. She is the nicest person in the world. And incredibly talented. You know, she's a rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a rapper. And a YouTuber. She, yeah, she's, she's everything. She is the nicest person in the world. And she's a New Yorker. Yeah. I'm walking here. She's a New Yorker. So. I'm not shocked that you guys hang out because all the kind things he said about her, I say about you, sir. Oh. Stick around because we are taking the gloves off in a minute. I've got to find out. Our friendship may end next because we're talking about Rebel Moon. So trolls go back down into your mom and dad's basement. We're gonna talk about this movie and I'm going to defend Zack Snyder to the end. Be prepared, we'll take a look next. Hey, welcome back. It is Take a Look. My name is Marcus Allen. This is the world-famous comedian Steph Sanders. Thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs> Love it. Thanks for having me, man. This All right. Great. We, we got to jump right into it. And uh, you and I have been friends for a long time talking yeah. about movies, but yeah. it may come to an end right now because I got to find <laughs> out how do you feel about Zack Snyder's Netflix original film, Rebel Moon, part one. What movie? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> come on. I, 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 you know what, the movie itself was kind of like, eh. but I love Sofia Boutella. Oh my goodness, I think she did a fantastic job. Yeah. She was she kicked buttons in the movie. I, I love her. She's what I like, like about you, you're like someone when they ask you how, hey, here's my brand new baby. Do you yeah. like it? You find something nice. Oh, yeah. look, it's got 10 toes. Great outfit. 10 toes. <laughs> <laughs> something will be wrong with that baby. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's talk about this. Sophia is great in it. I liked everybody in it, but I also liked the movie. I liked it visually. I liked the storyline. Yeah. Everybody's saying it's been ripped off from Star Wars, yeah. and in a way, it has. Rebel Moon, if you don't know about it, Zack Snyder went to George Lucas and said, I want to helm the next Star Wars, but I want to make it darker. Like, mm. I like Christopher Nolan Batman, right? Yeah. And George Lucas said no. So he walked across the street to Disney when they acquired it and said, hey, I want to take Star Wars a little bit darker. And they said no. So he went to Netflix, and Netflix said, yeah, here's $250 million, <laughs> go do that. And of that's course. what Rebel Moon is all about. I was on the set with Zack Snyder to talk about it. Take a look. How, when do you sleep, and do you drive yourself nuts with all of the precise plans? I drive myself a little bit nuts, but I... I think that the the sort of the work of, of of planning that cleanly and doing the drawings and making it all make sense is the is the work of the movie and in 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 a lot of ways when it happens it it feeds the next one you know to happen and so it it's a nice cycle of you know it's constantly being renewed and giving you energy to go to the next thing and energy to go to the next thing so. sure it's, it's, yeah, it's exhausting on one level, but it's, it's, it's kind of the job, so it's fun. And how nice is it to create something new? Like, no one really knows what to expect with this. People were blown away by this, and it's new. It's good fun because it allows us to, you know, frankly, to kind of, you know, bring the audience into something that, you know, people love discovering stuff. They love uh, new worlds, new characters, and this is a great opportunity for them to kind of make huge discoveries, so. I hope to do it along with. I wanted to take advantage of this moment because I've been wanting to ask you this for years, never did, but I'm gonna finally drop it on you because I know we have something in common. My mom bought me my first film camera. Oh, nice. Not even a Super 8, standard eight millimeter film camera. Oh, geez, awesome. Your mom bought you your first film camera. Yep. Is it true that you used it to make like this propaganda film that got you thrown out of middle school? It wasn't a propaganda film, though it was a, it, it include, it was my high school and, um, it was a remake of Apocalypse Now, uh, where the uh, headmaster was Kurtz, and they didn't like it that much. <laughs> Wonder what they're saying about you now. No, they're my friends now. <laughs> Absolutely. Congrats on this. Awesome. Can't wait to talk about two. Cheers. All right, let's Cheers. go. 
I, uh, I have had a chance to talk to him several times, but I never had the nerves to bring up that urban myth that he got kicked out of school one time for a film. I'm glad that we confirmed that that's mostly true. But can, can you imagine that, like, principal now going, yeah, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to kick you out <laughs> exactly. of my school. I think it was a precursor, though. I mean, it was a dark movie. Now it's... He, he got kicked out for what he does now, actually, so. Right, he yeah. leans towards edginess. Yes. Now, most people are piling on, like if you were to go to Rotten Tomatoes, I think it says 33% yeah. on the critics' mark, maybe 50% the user comments on it. Who cares uh, about them? I think it deserves much higher. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are saying he steals from Star Wars. As I just mentioned, this yeah. was born out of Star Wars, so he should lean into it. And you know why tropes are tropes? Tropes are tropes because they work. That's right, that's right. It was like more dystopian, darkness, Mad Max meets Star Wars meets Boys in the Hood meets, it's a lot of things in here. All and right. I, liked, I liked it for that reason. I, and again, Sophia Butella, that's all I gotta say. Exactly, yeah. again, you're like someone pointing out something kind about that's, someone's that's, baby that otherwise right. you don't really that's care right. about. They have great eyes. That's but <laughs> Sophia Mattella <laughs> is the great eyes to your friend's yeah. baby. Do you get piled on by trolls? Like, no, I've never seen a film quite as trolled as this one. Do you get piled on as a comic? Do people go, you do. oh, man, you especially stole from now. Pryor, or you stole from Mikey Winfield, is your buddy. <laughs> right, yeah. especially now. They want you to be um, trolled. So you, you want to do something to, to be trolled. So I've never done anything to be trolled, but, hey, they have, I've been accused of a lot of things. So. Got it. And that only gives me, like Dr. Dre said, you get good publicity, bad publicity, it's the same publicity. Thank you, Dre, for those immortal <laughs> words. As true now as they were when you said them 10 years ago. That's right. All right, where do we find you, Steph Sanders? I am Steph Sanders everywhere. I am Steph Sanders. Next up, uh, Punchline every month. I do a monthly show there called Off the Chain Show. Um, it's branded everywhere, all Live Nation the, um, centers around the country and Punchline. So just catch me. I am Steph Sanders everywhere. And Live Nation nationwide. Thank you yes, so much yes, for hanging yes. out. All right, coming up next week, Deb Patel is in the helm of this new movie that is amazing. Monkey Man, inspired by and helmed by Jordan Peele. We'll talk about that with the creators and the stars. That's next week. Until then, go outside and take a look. Peace. Thanks, man. Deuces. Thank you.